How's it going everybody, Mark here. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I take a lot of pictures. I try to post a picture or a reel almost every day. I get a lot of messages, questions, comments. What kind of cameras do you use? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the cameras that I use and why. Now I'm not sponsored by Canon or anything, but I highlight Canon products a lot just because I like using Canon. Canon wants to reach out and give me a brand ambassador sponsorship type ordeal or however that works because I really don't know. Um, let me know. That'd be great. Um, but I am just a Canon guy. I prefer Canon. I know all the settings. Once you find a brand, now if I could get my hands on an, a Sony a7 III, I probably would go that route just because the quality is amazing. But in any case, I'm still a Canon guy, so I typically stick with Canon stuff. Now, I love cameras. I'm a big camera person. Forrest Gump had this when he was in DC. I also have a, a Kodak 616 Brownie. Um, yeah, you probably wouldn't want to take this hiking. I still have the box with it, so I kind of put them on my shelf, and it's fun. I, I really like cameras. And I always have, since I was a kid. I am going to show you the camera gear that I take hiking and backpacking and why. So let's start off by what I'm filming with now, my phone. So I always have my phone on me, so that is why I primarily use my phone. Um, it's an all-in-one kit. I can shoot everything I need with my phone, and I primarily do. So I'm, gonna not, I'm just going to go ahead and get this one out of the way. A DSLR. I usually don't carry a DSLR around just because it's so heavy and bulky. But if I am backpacking and I know it's gonna be a super clear night, the stars are gonna be out, we don't have a full moon or anything like that, and I really wanna get, say, a time lapse, or if I'm gonna be able to see the Milky Way, I will take a DSLR, for instance, I'm still rocking a Canon T2i, that's all I need. I typically only have this for those nighttime shots that I wanna get. So I don't really carry it often. Now I've had this set up for 10 years now. I mean, it's nothing's changed. So go with what you can afford. If you want to carry around a DSLR, go ahead. You don't have to have a $4,000 camera. You can get this set up right here for a couple hundred bucks. I wish it was a couple hundred bucks when I bought it 10 years ago. I'm still using it just because all I need it for is those nighttime shots and it still works. So let's get into the Canon SX740. See how little this camera is? It's so tiny. However, it has a 40X optical zoom, which is insane. I carry this around for zooming only. So if I am on a hike and I see, say, an eagle or a bird or whatever, whatever type of animal, or if I see anything I want to zoom in on that's pretty far, that's what this camera's for. It eliminates buying a expensive zoom lens for a DSLR. So again, don't have to lug around a DSLR all the time. I'm already carrying my phone, so this for a zoom lens is probably the best bet. And this also shoots 4K. So I actually took this out to a lake and did a zoom test. I'm shooting 4K at 30 frames a second. So right now you can't see it, but there are ducks on the other side of this lake here. I'm gonna zoom in on them right you can kind of see them there it's 160 right there see how good that is looks so good that is why I like this camera for zoom and let's zoom all the way back out look at that from this angle you wouldn't even know they were over there and there's a plane coming. So I zoomed in with the 40x optical zoom. And then after that, you use a digital zoom, which if you can stay away from using digital zoom, I would recommend it. Mainly because you start diminishing the quality of the video. Now, if you need to, you're still going to get really good quality. But just know that anything after the optical zoom is really when you start deteriorating that quality. So just keep that in mind. Again, this camera is awesome. I always carry it with me. I've had this camera for a year now, and the reason I went with this model and not say a G7X Mark III is because this is a couple hundred bucks cheaper, so that is why. And it also has a flip out screen, so if I wanted to do like a vlog or if my phone is low on battery, I can just start shooting with this guy here. Great little camera, 
fantastic little camera and I will put links in the description below from everything that I have here. All right, let's get into the GoPro. I used to have a GoPro set. Actually, I had a GoPro 1, I had a GoPro 2, and then I had a GoPro Hero Session. I got rid of my Session because, to be honest, the Session quality is so bad that it wasn't even worth having around. I never used any of the footage that I filmed on. Now, if you're going to go and get a GoPro, I would recommend... So right now, we're in the year 2022. At the filming of this video, I would recommend going and getting a GoPro 8, 9, or 10. Those are going to have the best specs, quality. However, I am playing around with a GoPro Max, the 360 camera here. I am borrowing this from a friend. The really great thing about this is you shoot in 360 and you can kind of maneuver the video however you want with the GoPro app, which is kind of spectacular because you can just shoot in 360 and edit it to how you want it to look. So if you if it looks like crap in 360 or anywhere near that, just size it down, make it, make it a regular standard video. Pretty incredible on what they're able to do on the apps now. Again, this thing is really light. Look how small this is, especially for what it is. If you don't want to shoot 360 at all, you can just go into the settings and make it a regular widescreen, typical GoPro type footage. GoPro Hero Max, a lot of fun. I primarily have my point and shoot and my phone on every hike and every backpacking trip. Doesn't matter. The only thing that really matters is if, again, I'm having, I'm going out on a backpacking trip and I want to shoot the stars or the Milky Way or anything like that. That's when the DSLR comes in play. Now let's get into tripods. This was my go-to tripod years ago. It is the Joby 3K, and the reason is because it can grip and wrap this tripod around pretty much anything. A tree, a rock, a boulder, anything. So I really, really like this tripod. It suited me well. However, I kind of started upgrading because there is a drawback on this. Whoops. There is a drawback to this tripod though. This is all it is. It doesn't extend or anything like that. So if you're in an area where you don't have trees but you wanna get a mid-level shot, guess what? Can't do it. So for example, if you're hiking in the desert, probably not gonna to wanna to carry around a Joby. Same thing with a Manfrotto Pixie. Very small, lightweight, that's all it is. Very basic, very simple. However, if you are doing say macro shots of plants, uh, mushrooms, anything like that, and you need to be low to the ground, a Pixie's probably gonna suit you pretty well. I, do, I typically don't carry this around too much. That may change, who knows, I don't know. Um, but a great option if you like to shoot macro style uh, videos and pictures. Now this is my main tripod, my main setup. I typically have my phone attached to this at all times. This is the main setup that I have. This is a Manfrotto compact tripod. It's very small, just like so. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty small. I like the pistol handle here. So I can actually carry my tripod and do panning shots or handheld panning shots. And I can extend this to 61 inches. Now attached to it, I have a Manfrotto uh, phone clamp. Now the reason I like the Manfrotto versions is because the angle on the teeth I have not been worried about my phone slipping out of this. I've done the Beehive Trail in Acadia with my phone attached to this, hiking with this in my hand, and I am moving around constantly. I have not had an issue with my phone slipping out. Another reason I'm happy with this Manfrotto clamp is because right on top of it is a hot shoe mount for a light or a microphone. And typically I'll have a Rode Video Micro mic attached to it just to get a little bit more crispy audio. To get the Rode Video Micro to work with an iPhone, you will need your lightning to headphone jack dongle, and you will need to purchase a separate cable, which is a TRRS to a TRS cable. You'll be able to tell because of the jack will have three black lines on it, and then the other side will have two lines. So make sure that you see those black lines, but using this setup will make the microphone work with an iPhone. Yeah guys, that is my setup. That is what I use and what I don't use anymore and what I'm playing with now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And as always guys, I'll see you in the next one.